Hello everybody, I'm Chris Butler, and welcome back to the episode of Chris Butler's Album Club. Um, as usual, today with me I have Ben. Hello. Matthew. There's a lady ashore. And Santiago. Oh. Um. Alright, so... Yeah, we're getting a course. We will announce the albums, and then of course at the end we will then listen to them and then come back with our thoughts. So, uh, you all ready to hear what the albums we're going to be listening to this week are? Yes. Uh, Chris, Chris beforehand told me that I should be excited about this. So beforehand, but I'm actually pretty scared what he's going to give me. Ooh. Hmm. Well. I'll go ahead now and announce the albums. The albums we are going to be listening to today are Led Zeppelin 4 by Led Zeppelin, which I was like, does Matthew know? Because, like, you were doing the the Stairway to Heaven thing there, and I was like, does he know? But you couldn't have... the other one? You couldn't have known, because I didn't tell you. Uh, and the other one is Room for Squares by John Mayer. Oh! You okay, Matthew? Yes, I'm fine. Alright, well. First impressions, everyone. Ben, what are your first impressions on these albums? I mean, one of them, the Zeppelin 4, that... If I understand... I did understand that correctly, that one of the albums is the Zeppelin 4, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, well, that's one of the greatest albums of all time. Um, I have very firm opinions on that, like... I'll listen to it again, because it's just one of the greatest albums of all time, but like... Yeah, that's a very excellent album. I don't know the John Mayer album right offhand. I guess I should look and see if there's any songs on it I know. Probably not, but it's possible. Alright, well, while Ben Googles that, we are going to go to Matthew. Matthew, what are your initial thoughts on these albums? Oh man, um, I really like both of these albums. Um, both are my favorite of the both individual people. Um, so I'll keep it at that. Concise. All right, Santiago, what are your initial impressions on these two albums? Well, I know like two songs from Led Zeppelin Four. Well, I haven't listened to the whole album, of course, but I know it's a very famous album, so I'm totally looking forward to listening to this album, finally. Um, about John Mayer, I really don't know about him, so yeah, I'm going like clueless about it, very blind about it, I don't know. So we'll see, let's see. Alright, and as for me, um, I of course am very familiar with Led Zeppelin 4. I've heard it dozens of times, um, and you know, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I think I've probably already on this channel made my thoughts on it pretty clear on the Rock Round Table, but uh, of course I will talk about it again here later on in this video. Um, and as for John Mayer, well, I'm not really familiar with this album or this artist at all. I've heard the name, but I just really don't know if it will, you know, drive with me or not. So I'm going to listen in and we're going to see how it, it goes. I, uh, of course, I, I mean, I, it's almost certainly, in my opinion, probably not going to match Led Zeppelin 4, but I, I want to see kind of what's up with this album and if it's any good or not. So, so I'm interested to listen to this one. Uh, I already, of course, have a good idea what I'm going to say about Led Zeppelin, but... But I, I should be able to find some new stuff to talk about with um, Room for Squares, so that's that's good. Alright, well now we're going to go listen to the albums and we will be right back to give our thoughts on them, so stay tuned. Alright everybody, we're back now and we've gone and listened to the albums and we're back to give our thoughts. We are going to start with um, Led Zeppelin 4 by Led Zeppelin and we are going to start with you Ben. Ben, what are your thoughts on this album? Yeah, this is an excellent album, obviously. I think that, as I said in the audio, uh, before we listen to it. Um, 
it is just an excellent album. Obviously, it has many famous songs. Obviously, Still Way to Heaven is maybe a little tiny bit overrated, but still is like a 10 out of 10 song, so whatever. Um, but also, you have excellent songs with Black Dog, Vaca Wall, Battle of the Overball, Misty Matter Hob, Going to California, Wind for Levy Breaks. But otherwise, I think that this is a pretty good. Um, I mean, a very excellent album. Very excellent album, including Still Way to Heaven, to be very clear. 10 out of 10 song. Oh, why? Um. Oh. <laughs> All right, Matthew, we're going on to you next. What are your thoughts on this album? Um, for a long time, I'd said that I was kind of waffling on which Led Zeppelin album is my favorite. I think there was a brief period where it was Physical Graffiti because it had the song Cashmere. Um, and then it was like between that and this album, Led Zeppelin 4, or as what it was, it was originally called um, Untitled 4 Studio Album because. Um, like how it was um but this is this is led zeppelin's magnum opus this is their signature album um i think this album is all killer but no and no filler i mean it's bit you know it's just like it goes banger after bit like i think like there isn't a skip in this um in this album i think this is a great album uh of course it has i think one of the greatest songs of all time with Stairway to Heaven and I kind of was offended that Ben said it was slightly overrated because I think this it's like the fastest eight minutes I've ever experienced in my life it is like fast eight, yeah like for a song that's like eight minutes like I think the only one that's like that is um, uh, Free Bird by Leonard Skinner which is like nine minutes on the studio album and there's one that's like a full ten minute extended um it's just a fast eight minutes um I think all the songs are great you know Black Dog Rock and Roll Battle of Evermore of course Stairway to Heaven uh Misty Mountain Hop although I do prefer like the live version from uh the song remains the same of that track in the uh, original studio album um but it's still a really good track uh, for Sticks going to California and where the leaves break. So this is a great work. That's all I have to say. All right. Um, up next is you, Santiago. How do you feel about Led Zeppelin Fall? It's a good album. It's great. Like it, it, It's very solid. Well, it's solid. I won't say it's very solid. I, I want to say it's solid. Okay. And... Um, it has some great tracks. The opening song, which is what was it? Black Dog. It's really good. It slaps that song. Uh, I gotta say that my favorite song is Going to California. That's that's how I love that song. Um, the Ways to Heaven. It's a classic, of course. I will not say that I. I, that I fully love the song. I mean, it's a great song, but I don't feel like saying that I love the song, okay? But I recognize it's a great song. And so the album overall is good. It's great, but the, there's still something that holds me back, saying that it's an album that I would love listening over and over again, you know? Like, I don't feel like this album holds something special within me, you know, about how I feel about this album, like, there's no, there's not something that made me change my mind about Led Zeppelin after listening to this album for the first time, you know, so, like, I just said, like, yeah, it was good, it was great, okay, and that's it, nothing out of this world, honestly. Oh, right. Well, now time for me to give my thoughts on the album. Um, I really like this album. I listen to this album quite frequently. Um, it's probably my favorite Led Zeppelin album. Led Zeppelin is one of my favorite bands, um, after a couple of bands like Electric Orchestra and the Beatles, of course, but, but it's up there. Probably my fourth favorite band, and this is probably my favorite album by them, of I also like two in uh, Physical Graffiti quite a bit. You know, Full Sticks is a little... Week, it's 
I don't think about full sticks very really often, I'm going to be honest. But most of them, you've got Black Dog, you've got Rock and Roll, all-time classics, Bell of Evermore, that's one that's maybe a little underrated compared to the two right before and the one right after it. Uh, that's a, a really good one too. Still at Heaven's great, of course, and Ben is right, and Matthew's right, that it's a pretty fast eight minutes. Mr. Mount Hop, that's another really good one. Um, going to California, that's great. When the Levy Breaks, uh, also great. Probably my second least favorite song on the album, but it's great too. The only song here I'd say that's just kind of okay is Full Sticks, but you know, everything else here is like really, really top tier, so this is one of the best albums out there. A very uh, complete package, well paced as well, I always think. Um, I guess the second half. Uh, the second side's a little bit less good than the full side, but still, overall, pretty good. And, uh, yeah, that's basically I think this is a great album. Um, I just think it's a great listen. Um, I didn't listen to this, uh, this album in a minute, so it was good for me to re-listen to this and just say, you know, this is my favorite work of, like, I believe either my third or my third favorite band of all time. Uh, so that's it. All right, the next album is Roomful Squares by John Mayor. And we're going to start with you, Ben. How did you feel about Roomful Squares? Uh, I thought it was all right. I found most of its songs not super memorable, but they were pleasant to listen to. Um, the song, I guess, that most of the songs that most stood out for me. War, the full song, which is the famous song, No Such Thing. That definitely stood out to me because I was like, huh, this is familiar. Um, the song 83 also stood out to me um, for whatever reason. Um, I don't know. That one is, um, yeah, that one stood up to me. Your body is a wonderland. Hmm, I, I don't know. Is that the famous one? I think the the no such thing actually told it how. Um, like I think your that your body is a wonderland. I'm sorry, your body is the, your body is a wonderland is basically like the the big one from this album. Um, I mean, I I remember thinking that like it was okay. Like I can see, I can definitely see people being unhappy theoretically about um. The way it talks about the woman's body, but I don't really think it was a problem, honestly. Um, some of you all might disagree. Um, I didn't find it gross. I can see why people would, though. Uh, but I really don't think it was. I mean, it seemed to be pretty sincere. Or sounded very sincere, and like not objectifying to me. But I'm not. I didn't like spend a bunch of time with it or anything, so. I think altogether this album is fine. All right, we're going to be moving on to you, Matthew. What were your thoughts on this album? Ah, man, um, I really like this album. Um, like I, I think I was telling beforehand to Ben that after I listened to both these albums, I actually had like a tough time because I actually really, really enjoyed both of these albums, um, especially with. Um, uh, with this one, Room for Squares, which is my favorite John Mayer album, which is his first one. Uh, my favorite track of this is No Such Thing. I just love the vibe of it. Um, it's like a song that my mom likes, um, especially the I want to run through the halls of my high school. I want to scream at the you know, She always likes that part. Um, but like, I always like really like, I just really like the, uh, like the song. I really like why she uh, Georgia, I like my stupid mouth. I think my second favorite um, song of this album is Neon. I just like how the guitar works, like you know, all that. So I'm like, yeah, I really like that. Um, uh, I like, uh, I think it's City Love. It's like, uh, da, da, da. I like how the feeling of it's like you're driving, maybe you're by yourself and, and stuff. I like. Um, 83, I like Love Song for No One, and I like St. Patrick's Day, and I'm like, oh. the only song, coincidentally, that I just didn't care for is, coincidentally, Your Body is a Wonderland. Uh, not because, I think, like, 
the objections, the moral objections to it. I just never really was interested in that song. Like, as a John Mayer fan, I never cared for it. So, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed Room for Scourge by John Mayer. Um, Santiago, what were your thoughts of this album? I didn't feel anything for this album, honestly. I really didn't feel... Yeah, like, to be honest, the album felt too long for me. Like, it's, it was so long for what, you know, like... And all the songs were just okay to me. Like, not bad. But at the same time, it's like... I just didn't feel anything for it. And I would say it's just a good album for... You know, leave it in the background. You know, just to put music in the background while you're doing stuff. And that's it. There wasn't any song that stood out for me. So, so yeah, that's what I have to say about this album overall. I like my tone. Um, well, here's what I thought of that. My thought of was decently well delivered. And there were songs I liked on it. I liked No Such Thing. I liked... City Love, I think those were the best. I also kind of liked Free by Five. Um, that's track eight. Uh, but I will say, even those songs could have pretty, I don't know, at times a little bit dorky lyrics. Uh, songs I did not like was, um, I did not like 83. I thought 83 was a pretty stupid song. Um, it was this one time this guy had me listen to this parody song making fun of songs like this um that also had KK in it and I, I was oh, just oh Chris Chris yeah what would you say that you hated the song the stupid song because it came out of your stupid mouth no because <laughs> there's a song called my stupid mouth in the album yeah, that one was just okay, but 83, I, I, I once listened to this, this this parody song that was, felt more like a parody of Green Day than it did a verse in terms of a musical style, but it was like a song that was like, I wish I was young one, and it also had KK from Animal Crossing in it for some reason, and when I was listening to this song, 83, I just, I just couldn't help but think, think of that parody song, because this song, 83, it really is the most whiny, wimpy, Oh, I wish I was young, girl. I wish I wish it was the eighties, because I love the eighties and let's say it's the eighties are over glow glow. They're over um a lot, a lot of people overhype the eighties when it comes to, you know, of the past. Um because, you know, it's I mean if you really look at what was going on in the eighties, it really wasn't that good of a time. Um, but also this whole just, oh, I wish I was young, I wish I was a kid again thing. It's just pretty sappy and also just kind of, I don't know, dumb. I mean, you know, that's kind of the opposite of self-improvement and, you know, I, I guess I can understand it and, you know, it shouldn't be off limits with songs or whatever, but it just felt kind of, I don't know, stupid, um, inane, um, but like, you know, that's, that's that. Um, also, Your Body is a Wonderland. That song, mm, yeah, that song also kind of sucks. Uh, it's delivered well enough, but both of the ones are delivered well enough. I mean, there's nothing on this album in terms of presentation that's particularly grating, but the lyrics would say so are kind of awful. Not because I think the lyrics are necessarily problematic, um, but, um, um, but, uh, but because the lyrics suck, and if you're actually listening to the lyrics and not just kind of the general delivery, if you're not just listening to, like, the guitar and the tone of voice, um, then, if you actually listen to the lyrics, it's like, okay, this song's actually fucking awful. <laughs> Um, uh, some of the songs I thought were all decent enough. I mean, I, I, I don't mind some bad lyrics here or there, or, you know, but it becomes some point where it's just everything, you know, every word that's coming out of the mouth and the song is so cringe and, you know, it becomes, you know, oof. <laughs> uh, but the first album didn't really have that much of a problem besides the two songs. I mean, as I said, it was, you know, two bad songs, Your Body's a Wonderland 83, then Two really, I think, pretty good songs, No Such Thing and 
City Love, even though City Love's lyrics were kind of dumb as well. But it was it was enough that it walked, in my opinion. And then you also had Three by Five. That was a song that I thought was pretty good. Why Georgia was also pretty good. And the other songs on here, like uh, My Stupid Mouth, Neon, etc., were just kind of mediocre, forgettable. So this is the album that's kind of a mixed bag, but even the bad songs are more due to um, extreme lyrical failings and not presentation failings. Um, you're not really focusing on the lyrics, you're focusing more on the delivery. It is still presented in a completely more than listenable format. So I do think that kind of, you know, even though I say some of the songs were bad, it, they're not even as bad as they could be. Um, as they do still have somewhat decent delivery, so I think it's of all a decent album. Not like my favorite album, but there's some good stuff on there, and um, I, I I thought it was like maybe a, a a good album, not not like a great album, but like a borderline good album. Kind of would you kind listen of similar to kind of similar to the the Eagles one we listened to last time. <laughs> Um, would you say you would listen to this album before uh, Destroyer for a Kiss? Well, definitely. As I said, even the bad songs on this album were uh, delivered, uh, presented in quite a pretty good manner. I mean, e even the songs on here that sucked lyrically were presented with a decent presentation was everything in Kiss of the Destroyer was like the lyrics and presentation are both awful so yeah I definitely listened to this before anything on Destroyer I'd listen to any song on this album before any song on that album even Beth? It's, yes even Beth which was probably the best song on Destroyer <laughs> I would listen to uh, Your Body is a Wonderland or 83 um, 83 is actually probably the worst song on this album um I would listen to 83 a gazillion times before I listened to Beth once. Okay, you got me there, because I was like, I wouldn't listen to Your Body's a Wonderland over Beth, because I, I straight up do not like Your Body's a Wonderland. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if it's because of the moral stuff, or I just think it's like overplayed, but I never really get to that book. It's just so glorgy, oh. it's... Mm. I mean, it's like it's like I, it, it's like it's like it's like stuffing your mouth so full of gumdrops that you can't even swallow. It's just a very interesting way to say that. But anyway, let's go. Let's move on. Okay, before we move on, does anyone have any? Else? Was sucked. All right. Well, that that answers that question. Um. Okay. Well, we're gonna move on. <laughs> we're gonna move on now. Um. Okay. So now we're moving on to who liked what album better. Um. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, one of them is very obvious. Um, one of wait, one is very obvious, and one of them is like, um, someone will have like conflicting feelings. To me, it's quite obvious which albums, but all but your mileage may vary, Matthew. No, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was just basically saying one person. It's very obvious which one is better. Maybe three, but one is is a bit confused and is in conflict. I am I am urging you to see the light, Matthew. <laughs> Many of these albums sucked, in my opinion, so... Eh, it's fine. Um, <laughs> of course, it's always fine, but... Anyway, so uh, now, so which album we think is better? Ben, we're going to start with you. Which album did you like better? Obviously, the Zephyr 4. Like, that's an amazing album. That's like a top, top tier album compared to this Mario album, which... I mean, Mayor album, which is... See, he did Mayor. the thing! He did the Stop. thing! I told you, he's been like, when he's been talking about listening on the phone, it's been confusing me. That's why I keep screwing it up. I used to, like, get it wrong, and then he started getting it wrong, and then it seeped into my brain. <laughs> uh... Yes, anyway, I obviously think that there's a performance battle. Alright, uh, Matthew, which album did you like better? Oof. Okay, so in my day to day, I listen to Room for Squares more than Led Zeppelin Four. I would say I listen to No Such Thing every probably maybe every almost every other day of the week. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. Odd days or even days? Uh, it depends, honestly. 
Um, that being said, Led Zeppelin for doesn't have like I listen like no such thing. I if I did a list of favorite songs, I may have no such thing at, higher than Stairway to Heaven. But Stairway to Heaven is like one of the greatest songs that ever created um and um and it doesn't have a weak track and the weak track on Rooms for Squares is Your Body's a Wonder Island for me um and Led Zeppelin doesn't have uh Sick Again which is in my opinion, the worst Led Zeppelin song of all time. It's their run for your life. Uh, so, with that being said, I'm going to pick Led Zeppelin. So, yeah, Matthew, I'm glad you've seen the light, um, finally. I have seen the light. Light, but it was light, tough for me. light, in the light. <laughs> oh, White Santiago, which of these albums did you like better? Well, uh, the... The room for squares, it's like trash next to next to the next sorry next to the Led Zeppelin album. So yeah, like of course I I, I will go for Led Zeppelin album. You know, clean sweep. Okay, well I mean we still like yeah clean sweep. Um... It's good. The floor really did need some cleaning, and it's it's, it's really sharp. <laughs> you can eat off of it now. With with, uh, with, 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 with as great of an album as Led Zeppelin Four is, you can't have any bacteria on <laughs> that now, can you? Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> great album. Um, uh, <laughs> so now we're gonna do who picked what. Does anyone want to hazard any guesses as to who picked what? I think I think Led Zeppelin was picked by any of you. Yeah. Um, I think that Matthew picked the John Mayo album, and Matthew also picked Led Zeppelin Fall. All right. Well, time for a big reveal. Jump ball, please. <laughs> All right. Both albums were picked by Matthew. Ben is indeed correct. Um, any of us could have picked Led Zeppelin Fall, of course, but. As for me personally, uh, I think I've made this probably clear in the uh, past that I usually pick things that are, I feel like, at least decently new to most of us, um, whereas obviously three of us had hot Led Zeppelin for before. Um, Matthew just picks whatever he feels like listening to at any given time, which is quite respectable, honestly. M maybe we should be more like him. <laughs> yeah, maybe. M maybe. Maybe. M maybe. Quite, quite possibly. Um, also, that includes in not liking uh, Run for Your Life. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, 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 I'm certainly interested to see who will like the next pairing, because uh, that should be a very interesting one. So, once again, be sure to like, subscribe, stay tuned, all that stuff, um, because we will be having another episode coming up very soon, and it will be a very not necessarily an unconventional pairing, but one that is it really our, any of our styles? So, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that one. See y'all once again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. And, sh and she's buying her stairway to, to heaven. heaven.